If you need to add your initials, branding or other markings on metal objects, there are multiple ways you can do it. There's engraving, etching with chemicals and electrochemical etching also known as electroetching. Creating your own electrochemical etching machine is very simple. To make it even simpler, I designed this circuit board which was then provided to me by the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com. PCBWay.com is an affordable PCB manufacturer who offers PCB starting from just 5 US dollars plus shipping for 10 2 layer 100 by 100 mm PCBs. They are a great PCB manufacturer for all your prototyping and low volume production needs. Now they even offer 3D printing and CNC milling services. Go check out PCBWay.com. First thing first. Why you should consider electroetching instead of engraving and chemical etching. You can do engraving with affordable Dremel tool and an engraving bit or dedicated engraving tool. It's quick, okay solution for simple things like marking your name on tools. You do need steady hands or stencils, especially for more complicated shapes. For more complex patterns, there's chemical etching. Basically you create a mask, masking out areas where you don't want to etch and then use an acid to do the actual etching. The drawback is, you need to use chemicals that require special caution while using, storing and disposing them. Some people don't like having such chemicals in their workshop. The answer is electrochemical etching. Etching using electricity and a conductive electrolyte solution. If you have seen electrochemical etching machines before, you may have noticed they have two settings, DC and AC, or etching and marking. With DC power supply, shapes can be etched on the metal part, creating a recess similar to mechanical engraving. That is permanent marking, which won't rub off. The color of the material will basically stay the same. With AC power supply, the shapes will be marked on the surface of the part, forming a dark oxide layer on the very top surface of the object. This process should not etch or eat away large amount of material from the object. Essentially, the marking will be just changed color on the surface. Even though the marking made with AC is quite durable, it will eventually wear off. To have advantages of both methods, DC is often used to etch the shapes, followed by AC that adds the dark color which makes those etched shapes really pop out. Now that we have established a need for the power supply with both DC and AC outputs, we need to figure out how such device can be made. First component is a volvard with around 12 volts and 1 to 2 amp AC output. AC output is often indicated by this squiggly line or letters AC. Simple old style transformer based volvard is all we need for the AC based marking process. AC volvard can be made to output DC for etching process by adding a diode bridge rectifier and an optional smoothing capacitor to its output. By using double pole double throw switch, output can be switched between AC and DC. Another switch can be used to disconnect the output leads to avoid accidental short circuit. For those who are familiar with electronics, this is a simple circuit which is easily made without the circuit board. There's demand for these electrochemical etching machines among people who have never done any electrical connections before. That's why I designed this PCB which helps with the connections. There's no wrong way of connecting the switches on this PCB. The input wires coming from the AC forward can also be connected any way you want. This diode bridge has four pins. Two AC inputs indicated by the squiggly lines, negative and positive outputs. Positive goes to the square pad and negative goes to the opposite corner. Capacitor is optional and its function is to increase the power of DC etching process. If it is used, negative should be connected to the pad that has this white marking on one side of the PCB. As long as you keep that in mind, it doesn't matter which side of the PCB the components are placed on. On the output connector, the pad closest to the corner of the board is positive. You can easily verify this using multimeter on DC voltage range. I have one of these circuits already soldered and I'm almost ready to do some etching. The positive output bar goes to the object you want to etch. Negative goes to the crocodile clip connected to, for example, a Q-tip. You could also use, for example, a small bolt with one end covered with cotton pad. The Q-tip should be dipped in an electrolyte solution. There are commercial electrolytes, 
but I haven't brought any. One electrolyte solution just about anyone can make at home without buying anything new is salt water. Just some water with some table salt mixed in. The process will generate some toxic gases, so be sure to do this outside or in very well ventilated area. Touch the object connected to the positive output lead with the Q-tip connected to the negative output lead for a second at a time. Followed by one second not touching. Repeat this as many times as is needed. Dip the Q-tip in the electrolyte solution every now and then. Experiment with scrap metal to find out how long the duration should be and how many times this needs to be repeated for perfect results. After etching with DC, switch the mark edge switch down, making the output AC. Repeat the dapping process until desired marking intensity has been reached. Again, experiment with scrap metal first to see how quickly things happen with your setup. The end result should be durable markings which are just about as detailed as the mask you are able to create. The color produced by the marking process depends on the material and electrolyte. The speed of the etching or marking is affected also by the power supply. I hope you liked this simple afternoon project video. Thanks.